Good afternoon, my people. It's me, Vivian, and I got a video today for you, and it was a special request. I was asked, can I make a video for Mother's Day? And this is to all the mothers out there. Today's Saturday, the Sabbath, but I'm doing it today to make sure that you get it because I know you're all going out tomorrow to have fun and to celebrate this Mother's Day. So I'm going to start here with the Lord's Prayer, as I always do. If you want to pray along with me, go ahead. Our Father who art in heaven, holy be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for now and forever. Amen. Now, I want to read a few verses to you and then I'm going to read two stories to you. And one story is going to be about two mothers dispute. And the other story is going to be about a virtuous woman. So I'm going to start now in 2 Kings 4.30. 2 Kings 4.30. And 2 Kings 4.30 says, And the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul lives, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. Okay? The mother told that to her, her child. Now I'm going to go to Psalms 127.3. And it says, Lo, children, are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Okay? God gave us that blessing to have children. And now I'm going to go to Proverbs 6.20. And Proverbs 6.20 says, My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. God's telling this to the children, to the sons and the daughters. Forsake not the law of thy mother. And now I'm going to go to Proverbs 23, 22 to 25. And it says, Hearken unto thy father that begot you, and despise not thy mother when she is old. Despise not thy mother when she is old. Because when your mother gets old, like she raised us, we have to help her when she gets old. This is our job. This is what we're supposed to do. God said not to despise your mother, because she's going to need the help. 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice. And he that begets a wise child shall have joy of him. Thy father and thy mother shall be glad. And she that bear you shall rejoice. It's a gift of God. The mother's to be happy when they have a child. And from there I'm going to go to uh, 1 Kings. 316 uh, to 28. 1 Kings 316 to 28. Okay, and this is the two mothers dispute. Starting on verse 16. 1 Kings 316. Then came there two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him. And the one woman said, O my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house, and I was delivered of a child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered, that this woman was delivered also, and we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in the house. And this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. So I, I don't know, I believe she suffocated uh, the baby by mistake. Verse 20. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thine handmaid slept and laid in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. So she twitched, she twitched the kids. And when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I did bear. And the other woman said, no, but the living is my son and the dead is your son. 
And Ziz said, No, but the dead is your son, and the living is my son. Thus they spoke before the king, which was King Solomon, the son of David. Then said the king, the one said, This is my son that lives, and thy son is the dead. And the other, no. And the other says, No, but your son is the dead, and my son is the living. And the king said, Bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, Divide the living child in two, and give half to the one, half to the other. Now this is the this is the moral of the story. Then spake the woman whose the living child was unto the king. This is the real the mother. For her bowels yearned upon her son, and she said, O oh my lord, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. But the other said, Let it be neither mine nor yours, but divide it. Then the king said, Give her the living child and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. So you see, because the mother, who actually was the mother of the son that was alive, she loved her son so much that she was willing to give it up to this woman that says it was her, just, just so this baby doesn't get destroyed, doesn't get slain. She'd rather have give her child to this woman than to let this baby die. But Solomon, he was the wise king. God put him to rule and to put, place judgment on the people. He knew right there who was the real mother. That's the love that a mother has for her child. That is the love the mother has for her child. Now I'm going to go to Proverbs 31. And this is another story. And this story is about a virtuous woman. It says in Proverbs 31.10, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and works willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ship. She brings her food from afar. She rises also while it is yet night and gives meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She guides her loins with strength and straightens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good. Her candle goes not out by night. She lays her hands to the spindle and her hands hold it, the staff. So, so far, what this is saying is that this woman is so virtuous that she'll do whatever she has to do to support her family, her children. This is a virtuous mother. Even if her husband goes out and tills the ground or has a job, whatever he does, this woman makes sure to do all that she can to support her kids. Why? Because the husband, even though they're married and, you know, he's there for her, she still is independent, just like women, some women are that way today. They want to make sure that their kids are taken care of no matter what, whether the man is there or not. Even though the man is supposed to bring home the bread and the bacon, this woman says she's still going to do what she has to do for her children. She's going to make sure they took care of and her husband. She's going to make them clothes. She'll, put, she'll plant a vineyard. She'll uh, pull out the, the, the fruits, the vessels, whatever it is. She'll, she'll run a sewing machine like, you know, today they do that. They didn't do it back then. But she'll make whatever she has. She'll make sure that her children are confident, they're fed, and they're warm. And this is a good, virtuous woman. And it says, verse 19, She lays her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold to the staff. She stretches out her hands to the poor, yet she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She even helps the poor and the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet, which means double garments. She makes herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes fine linen and sells it and delivers girdles unto the merchant. So not only does she make clothes for her family, her children, and her husband, but she also makes clothes to make sure they always have money to, so she can provide for them. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. 
She opens her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She's a humble woman. She looks well to the ways of her household and eats not the bread of idleness. What does that mean? That means she's not going to just sit around and just wait to see what comes to her. But she's going to make sure that she has what she needs to feed them kids and herself. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excels them all. Okay? Because she has gotten riches. Not because, not materialistic riches, but she reaped what she sowed. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Because that's what God said. You reap what you sow. Even if she has her husband in the house, she still makes sure she gets what she needs. And God loves that. So with God, when you believe, nothing is impossible. So the Bible says, a woman that fears the Lord shall be praised. Okay? I'm going to go to Isaiah 49, 15. And it says, can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yeah. They may forget, yet will I not forget you, God said. The mother might forget to take care of her child, but God said he would not, because they are his children first. Now I'm going to read you some things that I wrote here. Some notes. It says, God will always take care of our children when we cannot. Because they are his children before they are ours. Because he created, he created us. And he already knew us before we was even in our mother's womb. And only God can save their soul and our soul. And in Ephesians 6, 2, it said, God said, he tells us to honor our mothers and our fathers. But right now I'm talking about the mothers because this is Mother's Day. So our children must honor us. And this way God tells us in Proverbs 22, 6. This is what God tells us. Train up your child in the way he should go or she. And when they are old, they will not depart from it the way we taught them. Like myself. I keep it real. I barely raised my kids. Because the devil had me going crazy. I was beside myself, always lost and in trouble. But that doesn't mean I'm not their mother or that I don't love them and care about them, because I do. None of us can take care of anyone until we find ourselves. In the situation I was in, I couldn't take care of my kids. I was on a mission, always in trouble, always doing things I had no business doing. And when you're in, the, when you're in that state of mind, you don't really have a mind to think. You just do what you need. And that's what you get. And it's wrong. All of us mothers have had different life experiences and difficulties. Some of us mothers are strong. Some are weak. None of us are perfect. Some of us have had it worse than others. And I thank God today for the mothers that have been there for their children. And the grandmothers who have been there for the mothers who mentally could not. Me the first... You know, God gave us the right to bear children and multiply and to teach and raise and feed and clothe them to the best of our ability. And my teaching to minds was and still are from the downfalls in my own life so that they do not have to go through the torment I've been through. And only God knows what we all have been through. And he truly understands what we go through. And as we go through life's changes, we live and learn. And we get better every day. And our children get older. They get married. They have their own children. They leave our households. They get their own homes. We watch them. We pray for them. Hope that their lives are 100% better than ours ever was. We love and pray as mothers that God bestows his blessings over them. And that by our experiences, they walk a better path. And understand that when we scold them or discipline them or try to teach them, 
that it is only because we as mothers do not want them to slip through the cracks, through the system, through anything that we've been through. You know, when we was out there doing drinking or whatever we did that was wrong and became our downfalls. We want to assure them that they can do better and that they do not have to follow our wrong footsteps. That this is part of God's plan for what we go through to make sure every generation after us can do better and be better and not fall short of his glory. And as being a mother and a parent to their children to teach them right from wrong. So now that what we teach our children, that's what they're going to teach their children. So if we don't teach them the word of God and to know what's true, they're not going to know it. I wasn't taught it. I learned it. God taught it to me. And uh, I couldn't teach my children it because I didn't know it. But now that I do know it, I'll rest assured, I try my best to teach it to them. And anybody that would like to listen. And I pray to God that one day they will come to the truth. And I pray to God that one day they could be sitting down like I am and reading the word and making uh, videos for others that don't know it and don't understand it. Tell them to come to the truth. Okay? So, we want to make sure that they're better and not fall short of his glory That's being a mother and a parent to their children to teach them right from wrong. And so all the mothers out there, I hope and pray to God that what I am saying touches your hearts and know that everything in this life for us has a purpose and a reason. Remember, we all have our own ways and we all have our own uniqueness. We cannot all do the same thing. We cannot all do the same job. That's why they have different skills, different opportunities for everyone. But God gave us all a skill that we are able to use our hands and our mind and to make it in this life. He didn't leave nobody out. If you're not in it, it's because you don't want to be. And every time we fall back, God will lift us up and continue to mold us until we are perfect as he told us. Okay? In Matthew 5, 48, God's telling us to be ye perfect as I am perfect. So this is why, when you, like when you take a, a, a clay thing, you ever seen the, the way they take it and they, they, they mold it and they mold it and they mold it until it's done, until it's perfect in their eyes? That's what God does to us. He takes us that way and he continues to teach us until we learn and become right. Because who would have thought that I would have been here today reading the word, making these videos, and, you know, I mean, for, for years I've been telling people about the Word of God, whether I was drinking or why, or why I'm not. You know, the people thought that back then when I was drinking and stuff that a lot, everybody would disappear on me because then I would get a little bit ridiculous. And some people listened and some didn't. Today some are listening and some, and some, some are not listening. But I'm still going to preach the Word. I'm still going to say it. And I want to thank my friend, Evelyn, who asked me and requested for me to make this video for Mother's Day. This is, this is a special shout out for you, Evelyn, and for all the mothers out there. I want to say Happy Mother's Day to every mother, good, bad, which is meaning the things we've been through, like me. If you had faults of your own or no faults of your own, if you had shortcomings, I want to say God bless you this day. God bless you this day and every day. Let us try to make a difference. And we love and pray for the mothers that are here and the mothers that are not here. We pray for the ones that left the earth. Okay? And now, I'm going to say the Lord's Prayer. Wait, before I do that, I wanted to say that God told us to be fruitful and multiply. He gave us the right to bear children. But I'm not saying to be fruitful and multiply in this quarantine. This is not the right time for it, people. Right now is the right time to get right with God, okay? So, here goes the Lord's Prayer. It's our Father who art in heaven, holy be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. For now and forever. Amen. And I want to let you know again that if the more you pray, God hears us. And if we keep praying for our children, the better they will be. God loves when we pray to them. And you know, when I gave my life to God, 
back in 1987, he told me that if I would follow him, he would save my family for me. And this is what I pray for. Every day, I pray that my family saved. Not only them, my friends, my friends that grew up in Coney Island, my friends that I know in New Jersey, wherever, wherever, anybody that I know, and even people I don't know. We have to pray for everyone. This is what we do. Okay, so I want to tell you to have a good, beautiful, blessed day. Have a good Mother's Day. I love you. Most of all, God loves you. And Jesus loves you. God bless my peoples. Take care. Bye-bye.